the stages and vehicles of spiritual practice. If you want to thoroughly understand the teachings and engage in actual practice, you need the guidance of a qualified teacher. This is because without knowing the methods, you would be practicing blindly or randomly. Without understanding the vehicles and stages, you may become arrogant and unrealistic. With the guidance of a qualified teacher, you will not waste time or go astray from the path. The vehicles of spiritual practice can generally be divided into the human and heavenly vehicle in the desire realm, the heavenly vehicle in the form realm and formless realm, the Shravaka and Pratyaka Buddha vehicle, the Buddhasattva vehicle and the Buddha vehicle. Each vehicle can be further divided into five stages, the path of accumulation, the path of joining, the path of seeing, the path of practice, and the path of fruition. For example, the Shravaka and Pratyaka Buddha vehicle can be divided into these five stages. When you practice the path to liberation, there are also these five stages. In the journey of spiritual practice, starting from the first vehicle, the human and heavenly vehicle, once you have completed the first two stages of each vehicle, the path of accumulation and the phases of warmth and summit of the path of joining, the first two phases of the path of joining, you can begin to study and practice the next vehicle. You don't need to wait until you have completed the third phase of the path of joining, the phase of acceptance, or even wait until you have entered the path of seeing to start studying and practicing the next vehicle. When you practice the path of accumulation and the path of joining of the next vehicle, you can gradually complete the paths of seeing, practice and fruition of the previous vehicle. They can be practiced simultaneously. However, it's not advisable to complete all these stages before proceeding to the next vehicle. If you were to complete all five stages of each vehicle before starting to practice the next vehicle, it would be a roundabout and unnecessary approach. The wasted time is not just a little. Sometimes, if you choose to wait, you have to wait for several great culpas, and the time is wasted. Once you become attached, for example, those who practice the human and heavenly vehicle, especially when they are reborn in the heavens of the desire realm or the form realm, will find it comfortable and happy. As a result, they don't want to practice the path to liberation. Instead, they enjoy practicing virtuous deeds of the human and heavenly vehicle. If you talk about liberation to them, they will run away. If you talk about practicing the ten virtuous deeds or the meditative absorptions of the non-Buddhist schools, they will be very interested. They enjoy practicing the ten virtuous deeds and wish to stay in the heavens. However, this situation will not last long because the six realms of samsara operate on the principle of balance. If you stay in the higher realms, human and heavenly realms, for a period, you have to stay in the three lower realms for an equivalent duration. This is definitely a balance. In the long run, it's impossible for you to stay in the human and heavenly realms forever. Eventually, you will fall down. After tens of thousands of culpas have passed, will you still remember practicing virtuous deeds of the human and heavenly vehicle? When there is no dharma and you are surrounded by evil people, 
you will gradually become evil. When you fall from the heavens and your merits are exhausted, you might be surrounded by evil people and gradually you will become evil. This situation will definitely happen. No one can escape it unless you transcend samsara. Therefore, those who are overly attached to the human and heavenly vehicle won't practice the path to liberation. Similarly, for those who practice the path to liberation, after they attain the first stage of awakening, if you advise them to generate bodhicitta, they won't listen. They will choose to attain a hatship first. After attaining a hatship, it will take them 10,000 great kalpas to emerge from nirvana. At that time, others have already become Buddhas, while they are still in Arhat. This would take a long detour, so we cannot follow this approach. As practitioners on the Mahayana path, when we have understood the view of the Hinayana and are ready to practice, we can start to cultivate Bodhicitta. Next, let's introduce the five vehicles. Number one, the human vehicle and the heavenly vehicle in the desire realm. The five precepts are the path of accumulation for practicing the human vehicle. Without upholding the five precepts, one is not qualified to become a human. If you cannot uphold the five precepts, you are an unqualified human being. Even though you were reincarnated as a human, it was just a coincidence. After death, such people will mostly fall into the three lower realms. When the population is too large and growing too rapidly, there is no other choice but to let you be reincarnated as a human. When the population declines, you are the first to die and then you will be reborn as an animal like a cow or a horse. This is the current situation. Since the population is too large, but there are not enough beings who are qualified to be reborn as humans, some unqualified beings are temporarily substituted to be reborn as humans. Nowadays, there are many such people. They are not qualified to be reincarnated as humans. They just have the appearance of humans. A genuine human being should at least uphold the five precepts. If you uphold the five precepts perfectly, you will receive the five blessings, wealth, nobility, longevity, health and virtue in the next life. The ten virtuous deeds are the path of accumulation for practicing the heavenly vehicle in the desire realm. By practicing the ten virtuous deeds, one can be reborn in the desire realm heavens in the next life. Consist of body, refraining from killing, stealing and sexual misconduct. Speech refraining from sowing discord, harsh words, lying and worthless chatter. Mind, refraining from greed, anger and ignorance. Now, let's briefly introduce the ten virtuous deeds from a worldly perspective. Number one, refraining from killing and instead releasing, rescuing and protecting lives can nurture compassion and maintain ecological balance. Refraining from stealing and instead practicing generosity can reduce crime rates, promote charitable work 
and lessen wealth gap and social conflicts. Number three, refraining from sexual misconduct and instead maintaining the harmony of the family can lower divorce rates and improve the quality of marriage. Number four, refrain from lying and instead speak truthfully. Number five, refrain from worthless chatter and instead speak sincerely. Number six, refrain from sowing discord and instead speak words that nurture harmony. Number seven, refrain from harsh words and instead speak gently. These four practices of speech foster trust and enhance friendship. Number eight, refrain from greed and instead be content. Number nine, refrain from anger and instead be compassionate. These two practices contribute to mental well-being and happiness. Number ten, refrain from ignorance and instead understand the law of cause and effect. This practice is the theoretical basis for the above nine practices. Number two, the heavenly vehicle in the form realm and the formless realm. By practicing the four meditations and eight concentrations on the basis of the ten virtuous deeds, one can be reborn in the form realm or the formless realm after death. The human and heavenly vehicle in the desire realm, as well as the heavenly vehicle in the form realm and the formless realm, are all based on the right view of cause and effect. This is because they believe in the cycle of reincarnation. In spiritual practice, right view is the most important. The views held by ordinary beings and heretical practitioners are all distorted wrong views either the view of nothingness or the view of permanence. Firmly believing in the law of cause and effect without doubts and continually realising it through practice is the path of joining for the human and heavenly vehicle. After completing the path of accumulation, it is the path of joining. Realising the law of cause and effect and the cycle of reincarnation is the path of seeing for the human and heavenly vehicle. It can be considered as the path of seeing because with the right view of cause and effect, one can somewhat be considered as seeing the truth. In this world, there are not many people who possess the right view of cause and effect. Don't assume that believing in the law of cause and effect is equal to having the right view of cause and effect. It's not the case. Some people understand the law of cause and effect in a superficial way. Although they believe in the law of cause and effect, if you talk to them about the cycle of reincarnation, they won't believe it. This indicates that they haven't truly understood the law of cause and effect. If one truly understands it, they will realise that where there is a cause and effect, there must be the cycle of reincarnation. Therefore, it's not easy to realise that the law of cause and effect and the cycle of reincarnation are true. Only when you have thoroughly confirmed the six realms of samsara and the law of causality without doubts can you earnestly practise the five precepts and the ten virtuous deeds. This is because with strong right view, you will practice it seriously. If you act according to the five precepts and the ten virtuous deeds, then in the desire realm, you will have greater blessings. 
less suffering of suffering, and more suffering of change. Hence, you will live a relatively better life. Worldly people think that satisfying others' desires and making others happy is an act of giving and a virtuous deed. Well, this is the virtuous deed in the worldly sense. However, from another perspective, such actions can actually cause sentient beings to decline. Therefore, they can't be considered as truly virtuous deeds. As ordinary beings, we all wish our families and children to be happy. Parents all over the world wish their children to be happy and free from suffering. They do their best to fulfill their children's desires and even spoil them. However, such parents are actually leading their children to decline. They lack wisdom. Nowadays, material wealth is abundant. Forty years ago, when we were children, the living conditions were very tough, but we might have been more grateful to our parents. In terms of material possessions, today's children are much more abundant than we were back then. However, many children harbour resentment towards their parents and lack gratitude. This is because they haven't been properly guided, which is the responsibility of the parents. In fact, happiness is the suffering of change, which is a type of suffering. The suffering of change increases the desire of sentient beings, as well as their suffering of suffering and all-pervasive suffering. It also nurtures their afflictions such as anger and jealousy, leading them to hurt or even harm others, thus creating the causes for falling into the three lower realms. So, are we actually harming sentient beings or helping them? It's not easy to have the right view of cause and effect. Only with the right view of cause and effect will we know how to truly help sentient beings. Of course, we don't deny that we should do good deeds, as according to the law of cause and effect, good actions bring about good results. However, when doing good deeds we need to have the right view of causality and wisdom. Doing good deeds mainly encompasses two aspects. On one hand, we should help sentient beings alleviate immediate suffering and hardships, including hunger, illness, or even danger. When they are facing various immediate suffering and hardships, we should help them. On the other hand, we should guide sentient beings to understand the right view of causality and learn how to refrain from creating causes of suffering. Education is crucial as it imparts wisdom to sentient beings. This is the true giving of wisdom, the giving of the Dharma. In fact, Education is more important as it teaches them to refrain from engaging in negative actions and creating causes of suffering. If parents excessively satisfy the desires of their children, it is not loving them, but rather harming them. Spoiling children is actually harming them. The human and heavenly vehicle is the foundation for the Shravaka and Pratyaka Buddha vehicle. This is because without the merits of being born in the human and heavenly realms, without a precious human life with freedoms and advantages, one would not have the ability, time and energy to practice the path to liberation. When practicing the path to liberation, 
one doesn't work. At least one doesn't produce food, do business or make money. During this stage, we need to rely on the support of others because we are practicing the path to liberation. Therefore, when the Buddha advised us to uphold the five precepts and practice the ten virtuous actions, he was not encouraging us to enjoy the blessings of the human and heavenly realms. Instead, he was urging us to accumulate enough merits in order to practice the path to liberation. Therefore, the human and heavenly vehicle is mainly urging us to accumulate merits rather than encouraging us to enjoy blessings. The essence is not, I do good deeds so I will receive good results. Of course, by doing good deeds, we can accumulate some merits that we can use when practicing the path to liberation in the future. Now, we have the good fortune to renounce worldly life and receive offerings, which is certainly because we have supported the three jewels for countless lifetimes. We must have supported or protected the three jewels in some way or served as Dharma protectors. Some people were Dharma protectors in the past, they have protected the three jewels for numerous lifetimes. Now that they have accumulated enough merits, they are reincarnated as human beings and become monastics. It requires great merits to become a monastic. It's very hard to obtain a precious human life with freedoms and advantages. If the merits are insufficient, there are three situations. Number one, one cannot get a human life. Number two, if the merits are slightly more or better, one is reincarnated as a human but doesn't have the freedoms and advantages. They don't have the time to learn or practice the Dharma. Or, they can only access the teachings of the human and heavenly vehicle, but cannot access the teachings on the path to liberation. And number three, although they have taken refuge in the three jewels and have heard the teachings on the path to liberation, they don't have the time and ability to practice. Some people have heard the teachings on the path to liberation but don't have the time to practice them due to various obstacles. All of these situations are due to insufficient merits. There are two types of merits, virtue and wisdom. Firstly, the merit of wisdom is very important. Without wisdom, you don't have the ability to discern whether someone is a qualified spiritual teacher and whether a teaching is the authentic Dharma. Even if you listen, you are not interested and cannot continue to listen. Therefore, the merit of wisdom is very important. Secondly, some people have generated a little renunciation and have become monastics, but due to the lack of sufficient merits of virtue, they are selfish and egocentric. They find it difficult to practice the path to liberation, listen to the Dharma and engage in meditation. In such cases, what should they do? They need to first serve the monastic community, which is the best way to quickly accumulate merits. Supporting the monastic community and the three jewels, especially supporting those who practice the path to liberation, can swiftly accumulate merits. Many of you have the good fortune to become monastics because you have previously supported the monastic community in helping sentient beings. That's why you accumulate merits swiftly. 
we create these opportunities to allow you to quickly accumulate merit. Some people don't even know that they will become monastics a couple of months before coming here. This is really inconceivable. If you choose the right path, the progress will be fast. No matter what you do, if you find the key, the right path, it will be fast and easy. However, if you haven't found the right path, you may go through countless hardships and spend years or even a lifetime without finding the entrance. If you find the right path, you can succeed in just one or two months. In terms of accumulating merits, you are quite fortunate. Please note that if you find it hard to listen to the Dharma and practice meditation, it indicates that you lack merits. You need to serve the community. If you listen to the Dharma and meanwhile support and serve the monastic community that practices the path to liberation, you will gradually accumulate the necessary merits. Some people, after coming here, feel that their merits are not sufficient. In fact, you don't need to worry. Just work for the benefit of sentient beings. In the age of Dharma decline, most people lack merits. Therefore, we encourage you to generate Buddhacitta. If we generate Buddhacitta, then what we accumulate will be not only the merits for the path to liberation, but also the merits for the Bodhisattva path. This is different and even greater. To become a monastic, Besides having a qualified renunciation, it's also important to have virtues and practice the ten positive actions. Therefore, when reviewing ordination applications, we first examine the virtue of the applicants, which is the most fundamental aspect. If this aspect is not qualified, we usually won't approve the ordination application. We base our decision on this. Those whom I have approved for ordination are generally quite good in terms of virtue. So you should trust each other. Those who are qualified to become monastics should be virtuous although they may still have some karmic habits, it's normal. If there are misunderstandings among you, you can sit down together, have a cup of tea, and have a chat. After understanding each other, it will be okay. In fact, many times, Disharmony among Dharma friends arises due to misunderstandings or each person clinging to their own opinions. Those who don't have sufficient merits may encounter obstacles when practicing the path to liberation and meditation. Some people, when practicing meditation, may become crazy or even commit suicide. This is because they have karmic creditors and they haven't properly repented. They haven't accumulated enough merits and haven't made enough preparations. Some people haven't properly cultivated the ten virtuous actions. Although they may develop a little renunciation, their predominant attitude is resentment towards the world. Such people tend to be selfish, lacking gratitude, with odd temperaments, and are not liked by others. Due to their inferiority complex, they may choose to stay in the mountains and feed themselves by farming. They may look like ascetics, but in reality they don't have the Dharma and don't know how to practice. 
They may spend their lives simply engaged in mundane tasks like working on their huts. Have you encountered such people? Some people live an austere life in the mountains, engaging in ascetic practices without the Dharma. In fact, this is because they lack merit. Their temperaments are odd. There are other religions in the world. Due to the lack of wisdom to liberate from the cycle of reincarnation, they practice virtuous deeds and accumulate merits to attain happiness in this life or the next. In the eyes of practitioners on the path to liberation, they are short-sighted. Of course, people with faith are much better than people without faith. People without faith are even more short-sighted. They mostly only pursue immediate or temporary benefits. They are either obvious egoists or shrewd egoists, or somewhere in between, with few exceptions, right? This is because they are short-sighted. People without faith are terrible.